Hi, this is Ryan Lynn with the Ethical Hacker Network. This is the Cobalt Strike Review. You can get Cobalt Strike at http colon www.advancedpentest.com. Cobalt Strike is the latest uh, tool that Rafael Mudge has recently released. It is an extension of a lot of the features that the Armitage product offered, but it has a lot of very cool new stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look. I've already installed Cobalt Strike. So let's go ahead and look at some of the binaries that ship with it. The first one is quick MSF setup. Cobalt Strike will go ahead and take care of setting up your, your uh, Metasploit environment for you. So by running quick MSF setup, it'll take care of all of the uh, latest Metasploit uh, installation as well as making sure your database is set up correctly. It's also got an update command that'll allow you to pull the latest version. Team server, which is designed so that people on the uh, same team can communicate through a sin, uh, single instance, share shells back and forth, as well as communicate through Cobalt Strike. So next, let's just go ahead and run it and get started. User interface for Cobalt Strike will look familiar. Uh, it looks similar to the Armitage interface. Since this is a trial version, it's going to prompt me, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Next, you'll may be familiar with this uh, interface. Basically, it wants to connect to a Metasploit instance. If you already have an MSGRPC server running, you can put the information in here. If you don't, when you hit connect, it'll ask you if you would like to start one. Go ahead and click yes, and it'll take care of starting the uh, message RPC for you. So now we wait for it to connect. It takes a couple minutes for Metasploit to load, and then for uh, Cobalt Strike to be able to connect in. A lot of the things that Cobalt Strike has added have been features of the Social Engineering Toolkit as well as, well as some great spear phishing tools. And it still has a lot of the same awesome uh, host management, exploit management that uh, Armitage has, but it's beefed it up a lot. So we see once the user interface loads that this is sort of a, a familiar interface. It looks very similar to, to what Armitage has. Under attacks is where a lot of the big stuff uh, is different. It now has packages, where the packages are different types of uh, malicious binaries you can create. Windows executable, Office, Mac OS Trojans, Adobe PDFs. And under web drive-by is a lot of the things that Social Engineering Toolkit has. The ability to clone sites, client-side attacks, and we're going to use sign applet attacks for this demo. We also have the ability to spearfish, and I wanted to look at that real quick. So for this, you set targets, you can set an email template, an attachment, which would frequently be one of those things that is under, for attacks, the packages, the different types of applications you might create, uh, an embedded URL, which might point to one of the web drive-by. Uh, then you set up the mail server and where you want bounces to go to, and you can use Cobalt Strike to go ahead and send those out all from this interface. So it integrates very well. We're going to do a demo of attacking an internal network. So we're going to start off by finding the hosts on our local network. So let's do an in-map scan. I want to do a quick scan with OS Detect. Our network is 192.168.230.0/24. We'll go ahead and launch that, and you can see that it popped up a new in-map window. This in-map window will have all the output from this command. So we can watch this as it goes along. We also have a console from where it started, which we can type in any of the commands that we normally would in a Metasploit client. So let me type in help, see all of the basic options, hosts, we don't have any hosts right now. So we can look at that again in a minute. While our nmap is running, let's go ahead and set up our social engineering attack. What we're going to do is we are going to do a signed applet attack. The Apple's name is going to be Media Player. It pre-populates our host IP and the port. I'm going to make this slash because what I'm going to do is another type of attack that will convince local uh, assets that I am any typo they make in a host name. It also has presets for listeners. So I'm going to use a preset that I've already created called Reverse 1. We'll look at that in just a minute. We'll launch this. We see that it creates a new window again, and it has our output in it. We're going to see nmap is still running. The next thing we want to do is we're going to start a NetBIOS name server listener. What NetBIOS name spoofing does is for hosts that have NetBIOS enabled, when uh, a host cannot be looked up in DNS, 
the host will fall back to querying out via NetBIOS, which is a broadcast protocol. So what we're going to do is we're going to respond to all of those broadcast protocols and say, hey, I'm that IP address. So one of the nice features is if you're looking for a module, you can come over here to the side, type in NBNS, and here's the module I want. So I'll double click here. The only thing I have to change for settings is I have to change my IP to this, 192.168.230.10, which is our IP address. And I hit launch. So again, launch is a new window. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to wait for our nmap to finish. We can see that it's finished now. When we click OK, we'll see that it pre-populates hosts. And there's the difference between the different types of OSs. So we can see that these are all Windows 7 or 2008 boxes just by looking at the icons. So now that we've figured this out, let's go ahead and take advantage of our NetBIOS name spoofing. I've got a Windows 7 box here. And what we're going to do is type in the host that doesn't exist, which is WooWoo. Um, obviously, don't really have a host named WooWoo on the network. But when it goes out and queries it, we'll respond because since it doesn't exist, NetBIOS will be queried. So now we see a loading please wait, like you might see. So down here, we see Metepra Session 1 opened. We see here that there's now lightning bolts around it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to migrate out of the process that we're in. Because if somebody gets frustrated at the loading, please wait, then they might close the window or browse somewhere else. So let's go ahead and click Migrate Now. And we can see that it spawned in notepad.exe and migrated to that process. So the next thing we'll want to do is we'll want to escalate on the system. So when we look at the new options for this, we can see that there's a interpreter one session. We have access, which will allow us to migrate, escalate privileges, steal tokens, uh, things to make sure we keep access. Interact, which will allow us to get different types of shells. Explore, which will allow us to browse files, processes, take screenshots. Pivoting, which will allow us to easily set up pivoting, and then ARP scan to find other hosts on the network. So we need to start off by escalating our privileges. So let's come down here, click Escalate Privileges. It pre-populates over here. So we have our host highlighted. We're going to double-click Bypass UAC. It knows we're supposed to use Session 1. And so we just click Launch. We can see here that it's starting up a uh, new window for the Bypass UAC. And we have a new shell open. So now when we look here, we see we also have a interpreter too. One of the things we may want to do is we may want to escalate again. So let's get system. Again, since the latest session is two, we'll go ahead and click launch. And it now has system. So we should see this update to Happy Packet system on the demo one server. So the next thing we want to do is we want to dump the password hashes. So let's start trying to do that. We go to our access, dump hashes. Let's try LSAS. It says it's trying to dump hashes and where we can view them. We click OK, but something's wrong. Since this is a Windows 7 system, it's not that easy. So let's come here. We're going to go to Explore, Show Processes. We're going to go ahead and migrate into LSAS so that we can definitely dump the stuff out of there. So let's migrate there tells us it's migrating to process 508. We click OK. Migration was successful. So let's try to dump hashes again. Tells us it's trying to dump them again. So we don't see any errors. Let's come under here, view credentials. So now it's dumped the hashes from the system and we have two sets of hashes. We have for the guest user and we have the administrator user. So now that we have hashes, let's highlight all these guys. One of the nice things that we can do is when they're highlighted, we can click Find Attacks. So this will go and figure out all the different types of attacks we may be able to run against these hosts. So now that we have this, we can look at attacks and notice that they're running Microsoft services. So there's DCOM, you know, possibly Oracle, Samba, but under SMB, we have pass the hash attack. So we can click pass the hash, select the hash that we want, 
we want to use reverse connection and launch. So it'll go through and it will try to launch against all the hosts. So now we have a new one. We were able to compromise the demo2 system. So what our goal is is we want to continue to escalate until we can get to the domain controller on the system on the network. So for this attack, let's look at Metropter again, access, and let's steal tokens. So for here, we can click refresh and it'll show us all of the tokens that it knows about. You can see it's grabbing tokens right now. Sometimes it takes a second. So we see that now there's the demo2x user. It's an X account, which frequently we see is a domain admin. So we see that this is a domain admin user. Let's steal that token. So now let's go interact. We'll pop a command shell and we'll see a new window open for that. So with these privileges what we want to do is we'll do a net user demo admin our super secret password of abc123 create it in the domain and we want to add it. We can see that completed successfully. So now we want to do a net group domain admins our demo admin and we'll add that user into the domain admins group. So now let's take a look at our domain controller. Let's come here and let's pass the hash again. But this time, we're going to use demo admin and our domain, which is happy packet. Specify a reverse shell. Let's launch that. We can see that it was able to successfully log in. A new sessions opened. So here, let's go ahead. We can see that we are system again on this box. If this gets hard to look at, you can always come out over here to uh, view and uh, sorry under hosts. Let's move it back to circle where we can see everything. So here's our domain controller. Let's go ahead and try to steal credentials from it. We go to access, dump hashes. Let's try to dump hashes with LSAS. Uh, the registry version won't work because it's domain controller. So it says it's going to try to do it, and it will fail. Reason is Windows 2008 domain controllers, you can't dump the hashes just from any process. So we come back over here again to explore, show processes. And what we want to look for is a system process that we can migrate into that will dump hashes. I recommend not migrating into LSAS because when LSAS dies, the machine reboots. So we're going to choose DNS. We're going to migrate into there. It migrated successfully. We come back again. We go back to our interpreter session. Dump hashes again using LSAS. When we go back again to view credentials, we see now that all of the credentials for the domain are available. So now, if we go back to any of these other systems and we want to attack again via pass the hash, we have all the different hashes available to choose from from the domain. This is especially handy if you're in an environment where not every user has access to every machine. Uh, for instance, if a domain admin user may not have access to certain critical systems, but through recon, you figured out which users do. Once you have all of these, you can just point and click to do pass the hash. So this is just a quick demo of how to use the product, the basics. Again, you can search for anything over here. So for instance, if you wanted to do MS080067, you can quickly type it in, find it, double click, and it'll pre-fill in most of the stuff for you. So we look at the uh, types of um, reverse shells. So 
when we come over here to Cobalt Strike and do preferences, we have all of the different preferences to customize. We also have for uh, listeners, we can look at what the different types of listeners that we may want to launch are. So when we edit this, we can see it's reverse, it's reverse TCP, and my default port is 8675 with automatic migration. So as soon as a session gets created, it will migrate into a new process. So we can have a lot of different types of these for your profiles, and as you launch exploits, you can choose which one you want. So if there are situations where a bind TCP shell is necessary, you can have one for bind TCP shell, one for reverse, one for VNC. You can also deploy other stuff on these guys. So if you wanted to see what's actually here, um, you could, for instance, interact, work on getting a VNC shell. So let's connect to localhost on port 5904. And so now we see our demo. So we can close that and close that. And so here we can look at any of the other things that we may want to, to view. So the applications, credentials, uh, any of the downloads that we have. You can also add individual hosts. Um, there's Hail Mary attack for if you just completely don't know what to do. Hail Mary will try all of the things that are possible attacks for you. You can also have different workspaces. So if you want to have different uh, engagements going on, you can have a different workspace for each, each engagement for organizational purposes. So, so this is just a quick view of the things that you can do with Cobalt Strike. Uh, there's a lot of more cool things that you can do. I encourage you to check it out. When you go to the website at advancedpentest.com, one of the great things that they've done is create a set of uh, demonstrations for all of the different ways to use it. So if you have some free time, some great videos there for you to check out. Anyway, I'm Ryan Lynn. This is Cobalt Strike Review at EthicalHacker.net.